What's up, guys, and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Our first question comes from Sun Goku, who asks if the general public knew about the Death Star. And Goku specifically references Dr. Afra issue number one, because there's a character that hears rumors of a planet killer, but just writes them off as rumors. So I do think at that point in time, pretty much everyone felt that way. Because, keep in mind, the Death Star was only seen at a handful of systems, and it didn't tend to leave behind many survivors. And the rest of the galaxy got their news from Imperial-controlled media. So they hear that Jeddah was destroyed in a mining accident, and they probably just accepted that lie. Now, Alderaan is a different story. That was meant to be a demonstration that was meant to show off the power of the Death Star, so they were ready to go public with it, and then it was destroyed. So from Dr. Aphra's father's point of view in that comic, he hears that Alderaan was maybe destroyed by this this space station, but then he stops hearing about it. It just disappears. So yeah, that sounds a little odd. He thinks it's a rumor, but I think that news would quickly spread throughout the galaxy that the Empire did have a Death Star, probably more through like smugglers and traitors and not propaganda so at the time you're referencing no i don't think most people knew but by the time of return of the jedi or even the empire strikes back yeah i think pretty much the entire galaxy was in on that secret scott jayro and dason flores want to know if i think chewie's family will appear in the han solo film ron howard did recently tweet out an image of two wookies together on set and we see Chewbacca checking out that shot, so I assume it's Chewie and another Wookiee, and that other Wookiee seems to be pretty close with him, so I do think that's a family member. We already know his family is canon, at least his wife and his son have both been mentioned in stories. I think that would be really cool to see. I would like to kind of get the perspective from a Wookiee on a life debt, because to us it's a little bit strange that Chewie would just leave his family and go off with Han for years, but I think it would be nice to know that this is something that's accepted by the Wookiees, and they live much longer than humans, so that he might be gone for 60 years, but in the like grand scheme of things, that's not really that big of a deal to a Wookiee, um, but I would still think that having him say goodbye and be like, I have this life debt, I need to go, honor compels me, and they're like, we get it, go off and do your thing, I think that would be a touching scene. Bear asks if I think we will see more of the New Republic in Battlefront 2. That's a really good point that I hadn't considered yet, because the New Republic was kind of glossed over uh, in The Force Awakens, but they were present for the Battle of Jakku, and... It looks like the trailer shows us some of that battle. So yeah, we might get to see some New Republic uniforms, and we might get to see the Starhawk capital ships that have been mentioned. Uh, although I think the New Republic uniforms are pretty much going to match Rebellion uniforms. I don't think much had changed by that point, but I do think you're onto something, and Battlefront 2 might be our very first visual look at the New Republic. Now that Game of Thrones is back, Jonathan Glassburn wants to know what I thought of the Season 7 premiere, and wants to know if I have read A Song of Ice and Fire. I thought the episode was fantastic, the cold open with Arya and the phrase was bone-chillingly awesome. I also really like how even, like, C-list characters in that show are incredibly compelling. I love the scenes with Thoros and Beric, and... They're not in the show much at all, but I'm like, I would watch an entire show just about the Brotherhood and what they're up to. I love those characters. I can't wait to see them do more. Um, as for the books, yes, I have read all of them once. I don't know which I prefer. I guess the books, because they get the chance to be a little more intricate, and by a little, I mean way more intricate. But some of Martin's writing, and especially the way he foreshadows things, is just brilliant and I, I love going back and kind of picking out those details like I haven't read them all the way through but I will go back and read sections here and there um, but I will admit that sometimes I enjoy the simplicity of the show and how they have just condensed things a little bit it all seems to pretty much make sense to me so I don't know they're both kind of on even ground for me 
Tim Etheridge asks if we might see Cassian or K2 or Bistan or Pow or other Rogue One characters in Star Wars Rebels now that the crew of the Ghost is on Yavin 4. I think that's a very safe bet. Something less likely that I would really love to see is Kanan and Ezra dealing with, say, the spirit of Exar Kun. That's something from Star Wars Legends about how he wound up embedded within the walls of the Masasi Temple, and there are multiple hints in canon that the Masasi Temples are still related to the Sith, so I think that would be a really easy and fun way to tie in some Legends content. That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where I left you a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month will get you access to extra Star Wars Explained goodies like monthly giveaways or audio commentaries for the films, and the combined donations really go a long way in supporting the channel. On to YouTube questions, Sturfelt asks my opinion of Forces of Destiny and its animation style. To start with the animation style, I wasn't crazy about it. I don't love the way it looks, but I also understand why it's that way. This is basically just a YouTube experiment for Lucasfilm. The budget couldn't have been very high for this, so they're not going to get anything mind-blowingly good in the animation department, and I think they spent most of their money on the voice acting. That said, if this experiment goes well and they do this again, maybe future episodes will have a bigger budget. As for the stories, I found them to be pretty hit or miss so far. I know that there's still, I think, eight more to come out, but so far, it, some I thought were really good, and some I was just like, okay, well, this didn't do anything for me either way. I found that the ones that were more closely related to the Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels seemed to be better, and I think that's because they match in tone. Rebels and the Clone Wars are already cartoons, so another animated story seemed to mesh well, but when you do a story about Jin Erso, who's a pretty dark character, I just didn't think that her episode worked at all, especially considering the story of Rebel Rising. At that point in time in her life, it just seemed completely out of character for me. She didn't care about anyone, although I can see her caring about, like, this girl that's sad and alone and all she has is her cat. I could see her empathizing with that, but then she introduces herself as Jin Erso at the end, and at that point in time, she did not consider herself to be an Erso. She was kind of ashamed of her family name, so that episode just didn't really work for me, but um, that's my opinion on Forces of Destiny so far. Star Commander wants to know if we've ever seen a male Miri Allen, the same species as Luminara Unduli or Barisafi. I can't think of a canon example, but we've definitely seen one in Legends. And, I mean, they just look like humans with green skin and patterns on their face. I imagine that they would be the same in canon. We just haven't had an opportunity to see one yet. Sheev of the Senate asks why Rex or Gree or some other clones have different hair colors than most of the clones. And they just dyed or bleached it. I mean, the clones had this individuality that they wanted to express, and different hairstyles or hair colors was a major part of that. On top of that, we as the audience needed to be able to distinguish them, so that's why they had so many different hairstyles, and there's only so many styles you can do, so you had to resort to colors as well. But that's basically all there is to it, just dye or bleach. Supreme Leader Smeagol wants to know how Luke learned to use Force Choke since it was a dark side ability that Yoda wouldn't have taught him. I don't think that's something that any Force user would specifically have to be taught. I mean, Luke, before he even met Yoda, knew how to telekinetically pull a lightsaber into his hands, so he knows how to grip something with his mind. I imagine that gripping the throat of an enemy would actually be a little bit of a step back from actually having to grip something and call it to your hand. So I don't think that's something he specifically had to be taught. He probably just learned it on his own. Joey Kevorkian asks why some clones say these Wookiees are already dead in Revenge of the Sith. Were they trying to save wounded Wookiees or were they trying to hunt them down? Well, we see Tarful and Chewbacca immediately help Yoda when Order 66 began, so I kind of imagine that once they realized what was going down, 
the Wookiees turned on the clones. There were more Jedi there than just Yoda. We saw Illuminara and Dooley there. I bet there were even more, so they probably saw the clones turning on the Jedi, and then the Wookiees tried to support the Jedi. So yeah, I kind of imagine that they were hunting them or trying to capture them. Some sources have stated that the takeover of Kashyyyk happened pretty much immediately after Order 66, so I bet they were already trying to round up the Wookiees. That's all the time I have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below, or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. Also, I do a weekly Q&A on Anchor. It's every Friday, so you can get to my Anchor station by following another link in the description, and you can leave me a call-in, and I will actually play your clip on my station, and then I will answer it. I do that every Friday, so check that out if you want to. But if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.